Hello ladies and gentlemen. Let's talk now about oligopolistic pricing for our Unit 8 microeconomics class. Now you might remember that an oligopoly is two or at most very few producers producing the exact same thing. So we're going to explore that concept and how that affects pricing decisions. So uh, if you look at this slide, you'll notice that there are two gas stations in this small town and they're right next to each other. They happen to be the only two gas stations in town. And uh, so basically uh, all the customers come to them. Now the customers know that there's really no difference in the gas. That the same truck comes from the pipeline each day to resupply the gas stations. One day it resupplies the Shell station, the next day it resupplies the Sitgo station. So in effect there is no difference in the gas lanes. Yes, there may be some slight additive that one or the other advertises they, they put in their gas, but in effect there is no difference. The other thing we will assume is that there are no people in this town who use only either the Shell gas ca uh, credit card or the Sitco credit card. So these people all use, if they use a credit card, they either pay cash or they use a general credit card. So there, again, there is no preference to them in either using Shell or Sitco in this case. Okay, so. The first thing we notice is that their prices are identical, each one charging $3.44, 44.9 per gallon. Okay. So obviously what they're doing is splitting the business. They each get half of the business roughly and uh, that's how that works. Okay. But if something were to change, if one of those suppliers one of those gas stations were to drop their price significantly, let's say from $3.44 down to $2, in this case the Sitco station doing that, I don't know about you, but in that situation I think I'd go buy gas where the $2 is. Okay? So most of the people in this town would do the same thing and we would find that the Sitco station at $2 a gallon would sell all of the gasoline in that town and the Shell station right next to them would sell none of it. So of course if we reverse the situation and have the Shell station only charging two dollars and the Sitco leaving their price at three dollars forty four point nine a gallon obviously all the business is going to go to the Shell station and the Sitco station is going to get no business. If they were both to charge the same two dollars, that low price, then once again they would most likely split the business and end up with an even share of the business but at a much lower revenue. Why do we even care? Well, in reality every business, and I mean every business, it doesn't matter if it's the pie baking shop that we talked about in one of our uh, units or any business that you might have or any business you might work for, they're constantly making pricing decisions most often based on what their competitors are doing. Now there are a myriad of options of what a business can do pricing wise and if we want to study the impact of various pricing strategies then we need a simple model. You might remember our discussion of simple models back in Unit 3 where we talked about how the Wright brothers uh, used a very simple model of a wing to design a flying airplane. Well we're going to have a very simple model likewise to discuss pricing. Our model is going to start off with a really nice island out in the middle of a bay okay, with a town fairly close by. Now a lot of people would like to go to that island for recreation purposes okay, and unless they have their own boat they're stuck at the town. They can't get there unless they're really good swimmers. So we end up with you starting a water taxi service you have a boat and you can haul people out to that island for a fee. Well, on the other side of town, your competitor has an identical boat and will take 
people out to the island. The services between you are virtually identical. The boats are the same. The quality of maintenance is the same. The service that you provide would be the same. The only thing that's going to be different is going to be the price that's charged. Okay. So again, there'd be a lot of different options that we could explore, but with the idea in mind that we're going to have a simple model, we're just going to say that we're either going to have a high price or a low price. And we're not going to deal with all the possible in-between prices that could be charged. Okay. So let's go ahead and move ahead and see what our options would be. Okay. Well, first off, you could, and you're in the yellow here, you could charge a low price and your competitor could charge a low price. Now, some, some Kaplan students uh, from economics studied your operation and your competitor's operation and they kept records and they found out that on average when you chose the low price and your competitor charged the low price that for a given day you might only make twenty dollars profit but you each would have split the business and so therefore each of you would have gotten twenty dollars profit right. now another option might be that you charge a high price and your competitor charges a low price. Well, in that case, you're no longer going to split the business because people are going to go to the customer, the supplier who has the low price. Okay, so your competitor is going to get all the business. You're going to make nada, not a penny. Okay? Now, another possibility is that you charge the high price or I'm sorry, you charge the low price and your competitor charges the high price. Well again your triangle is the one in yellow. You see that you make the hundred dollars of profit and your competitor makes nothing in the green triangle. So and then a final option would be that both of you charge the high price and in that case you're each going to get fifty dollars of profit for that day and because you basically split the business. Okay. So Let's take that a little bit further and see how it works. Okay, the question becomes if you can charge a low price or a high price, and we're going to assume you only get one shot at charging this price, okay, and uh, you have no clue what your competitor is going to do. You see the question marks on your competitor's side. So, what happens and what your your real question is what is going to be the safest choice for you to choose should you go low or should you go high well again to reiterate if you go high and your competitor goes high you see your yellow triangle highlighted in purple here shows that you make fifty dollars well that's not such a bad deal okay? however if you charge the high price and your competitor charges the low price now your yellow triangle highlighted in purple gives you nothing so that means you have a 50 50 chance of either making nothing or making fifty dollars profit okay let's go see what the other options would be um, so we know what the two options are there okay now if you were to charge the low price and your competitor were to charge the low price then as we saw earlier you're going to split the business and you're only going to make twenty dollars profit as is your yellow triangle outlined in purple if you charge the low price and your competitor charges the high price now your yellow triangle outlined in purple is going to be a hundred dollars and your competitor gets nothing okay? So then the question becomes, if you don't know what your competitor is going to do, which is the best way to go? Well, we saw if you chose the high price, you had a 50% chance of making nothing and a 50% chance of making $50. If you do the low price, you have a 50% chance of making $20 or a 50% chance of making $100. Sounds to me like low price is going to be the safest way for you to go. Okay, and we call that particular strategy when you don't know what your competitors are going to do and you need to make a single choice, a single pricing choice. We call it the Nash Non-Cooperative Equilibrium. 
pricing strategy. Now, why is it? Well, first off, Nash is the name of the uh, uh, economist who devised this method of explaining pricing. And non-cooperative means you don't know what your competitor is going to do, and you are not able to talk to them. Okay? And then equilibrium just means that this is the best option for you. Okay. Now, let's go on a little further, and we'll see how various scenarios would play out. We know that you could charge the high price, and if your competitor were to charge the high price, then you're going to split a handsome profit. Okay? So that sounds pretty good. So maybe it would be a neat idea if the next time you were out at the local golf course and your competitor showed up at the same time and maybe you could get out on the back nine and some secluded hole that you're playing and you could kind of talk on the side and say, hey, what do you say? We both just charge the high price and that way we can split the business and make the best profits. Sounds like a pretty good idea, doesn't it? Well, unfortunately, that is collusion, where people secretly get together and decide what to charge. And that is not permitted. As a matter of fact, it is against the law. Specifically, check out the Sherman Antitrust Act. Okay? Competitors are, or uh, businesses are not allowed to get together and secretly or overtly collude in other words, decide, agree, if you will, in advance as to what they're going to charge. So that option is out. Okay. Now, so we know we've got a whole series of options. What happens when we have two time periods to set prices in? We're going to set them one period, and then we're going to have to respond to whatever our competitor did and set them again in the second period. And we want to kind of see what that's going to do to our total profits. This is very similar to the assignment that you have for unit eight. Okay, so in the first situation, if you always charge the low price and they always charge the low price, Okay. Remember, that's our Nash non-cooperative equilibrium. You choose the low price. Well, they happen to have gone to Kaplan also and studied economics from Professor Sam. So they know that too. So if you both end up charging the low price in the first period, well, if we look at the chart, we're going to see that you're each going to make $20 of profit. Okay. You each charge the low price. Yours is in the yellow, just like your yellow triangles. Theirs is in the green. Okay. Now, in the second period, because you always charge the low price, you're going to charge the low price again. And because your competitor always charges the low price, they're going to charge the low price again. So in the second time frame, once again, we split the, the, the business with a low profit of $20 a piece. And in total, we make the $40 each that you see in the lower right hand corner in red. Okay, So that's one possibility. Another possibility is what we call tit for tat. This is another strategy versus cheating. Now, as I mentioned, both you and your competitor at different times have taken this same course from Professor Sam. And you both know that the ideal situation for each of you is to charge the high price. You're going to make the most profit that way, and you'll split the business. Okay? So if one of you, knowing that the ideal is to charge the high price, but if one of you decides to cheat and charge the low price, then you know you're going to get all the business. Okay? So uh, that said, what is this thing tit for tat? Well, tit for tat is doing what the other person did last time. So let's look at this. Okay? So if the ideal situation is both of you charge the high price, okay, then cheating is going to be charging the low price trying to get all the business. Okay. Playing tit for tat is doing what the other person did last time. So if your competitor went low last time, what are you going to do this time? 
well, you're going to do what they did last time. So you're going to go low in the second period. What happens if they went high last time? Well, if they went high, you're going to do what they did last time. You're going to go high. So whatever your competitor does last time, that's what you're going to do the next time if you're playing tit for tat. Okay. Likewise, if your competitor is playing tit for tat, they're going to do what you did last time. That's what tit for tat means. Okay, so we'll explore that. Let's assume that you always play tit for tat. And they always cheat. They always charge the low price. What happens? Okay, well, in that first period, they charged the low price when you took the high road. Okay? Well, you didn't get anything out of that deal. And they got the whole ball of wax. So what are you going to do in the second period? In the second period, you're going to do what they did in the first period. That means you're going to charge the low price, just like they did in the first period. So what happens to the money? Well, in the second period, both of you are going low. You both get $20. But if we look at the totals, you see because you got nothing in the first period and 20 in the second period, you get a total of 20. But your competitor got 100 in the first period and 20 in the second, they come out with 120 out of the deal. Not too shabby. Now, we could reverse the situation, and this time they're the ones that play tit for tat, and you're the cheater. Okay? So what happens in the beginning? Well, again, you're going to cheat by charging the low price. Well, they take the high price, so you're going to get everything. So in yellow, you're going to have the $100. They're going to have nothing. But they're going to do what you did last time because they always play tit for tat. So therefore, in the second time, because you went low, they're going to go low this time in the second period. And so when we add up the numbers, we see the exact same numbers, but for the opposite people. This time, you in yellow get $100 in the first period and 20 in the second period for a total of 120. And they get nothing in the first period and 20 in the second period for a total of just 20. Okay. What about if you both play tit for tat? Well, that's an interesting thing. So we know that starting point is charge the high price. So both of you charge the high price in the first period and you each get $50. Okay. What are you going to do in the second period? Remember, they charge the high price. You're going to do what they did last time. So you're going to charge the high price next time because they did high last time. And what are they going to do? Well, you did high the first time, so they're going to do high the second time. They're going to do what you did last time. So lo and behold, you both end up at high again. Okay? And so now we find that over the two periods of time, you each made $50 and you each split $100. Okay? So that's pretty much how these pricing strategies, especially as they would be seen in something similar to the assignment that you have for Unit 8, is going to work. Again, the main reason that we talk about this is because pricing is so important in every aspect of business. Doesn't matter the kind of business, it's important. So with that, I'd like to thank you. And if you have any questions, please contact me at the, the uh, instructor's virtual office. Thank you.